What is the crack lads? We're back and we're doing these videos back to back because I know a lot of people will ask questions about it and I don't want making like a 20, 30 minute video because it's hard to sit through that, especially listening to me with my big thick Irish accent. Um, but yeah, I know that a lot of people are going to be asking me about this and asking me about kind of solutions to the last video. So if you've missed the last video where we talk about kind of like what the top 10 players in Division 1 are using at the moment. We went through from number 1, the Alpha, to number 10, Nate 900. Um, we are just going to kind of take a look at different stuff that is happening um, when people are playing the game, right? Because obviously, you can just look at anybody here, right? You can look at Mestre, who's obviously a professional player for Bayern, uh, who's a rank 1 player. His highest was rank 13. He's currently 28. And you can look at his squad, and again, it just follows true on what I said in the last video. You're going to have your three centre backs, Rudiger, De Ligt, and Tamori. You're going to have Hernandez on the left as your option for uh, out wide. You're going to have Kimmich as the stopper, Goretzka as the engine, Neymar as the actual whole uh, central creative midfielder, and then you're going to have your front three of Liao, Mbappe, and Romanegi. Not really needs to be said about this team. It's an absolutely unbelievable squad. I would say the only way to improve this squad would probably be if he had, I would say, maybe a can in goals instead of Neuer, but I'm not too sure if that would just be personal preference. And I would probably have, even though Kimmich is a beast, I would probably still think that uh, Makaleli would be better there. But like you can just go through any random team in the top, you know, 50. Like you can literally go through any, ra any random team in the top 50. Um, and you can take a look at anybody that you want to take a look at. And this guy uh, has got to uh, rank four before. And again, it follows through that you've got your two, your two center midfielder or your two center midfielders, your DMF. You've got your Hernandez as a left back. You've got your three center backs. Aspilicueta is technically a, a center back, even though he's playing right back. And you've got your three strikers up front as well. Um, so Neymar is going to feature in all of these teams practically. I did a video where I talked about the top like 11 or 10 players that people are actually using. If you go into any team here, right, in the top 50, like, or, you know, whatever, like take number 50 here, you go into the top 50, right? You're going to see that nearly everybody is going to have a couple of epic players, a couple of legends, and then they're going to have a player pack or two. You can see here, this is one of the strongest teams I've seen. So he's got three epics in midfield. He's got an epic up front and an epic at the back. Fully maxed. Absolutely insane. Messi is going to be in 90% of teams, either on the squad or on the actual team themselves. Mbappe is going to be there as well. No matter what squad that you look at, you can see here Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, Rudiger, uh, Koundé, Kimmich, Donnarumma, Davies, like Davies is going to feature in all of them, right? So I think, as I said, right, there is a way to play this game and there is going to be ways that you can actually um, kind of like, look, a lot of the, a lot of like what sets these guys apart from their teams is their actual skill. Like, let's not, you know, discount that either. Like, it's not like saying that I could literally take this guy's squad, right? He could give me his squad and he could give me his position in rank one. And he could say, right, I'm going to play this 3 2 4 1. This is a bit of a kind of a unique formation to be in Division 1, right? So he's obviously an extremely good possession based player that is able to actually get up and down the pitch. He's got Mason Mount in there. He's got Messi leading the lines, Barella and Kimmich to win the ball back and block the passing lanes, and then Foden and Iniesta. I would say he's probably using a sub tactic, but Mbappe is leading the line. And then he's got his solid bank of three at the back Rudy, Van Dyke, and Beckenbauer, right? I could take this squad. I could build a very similar squad to this. In fact, I have practically every player here on this squad, apart from Beckenbauer and Mbappe. I could buy Mbappe. He's the regular version. I don't have Beckenbauer, but you know, I could get an alternative there very easily. Um, it's it's what these guys, their actual skill level is insane. Like they are at a completely different level. <clears throat> Yes, there is a bit of luck in it. Yes, there is going to be, you know, a bit of fortune um, every time they win a couple of games here and there that they shouldn't win. Um, but it's just that, like, the, the thing about it is, is that these guys are so good because when they get a chance in front of goal, they just absolutely rip it. And there is levels to it, man. There is levels to it. It's as simple as that. Like, there's a lot of names in here um, that, like, are familiar to me. And we take anyone, even in the, the number 99 player in the world at the moment, He's playing a 4-3-3, but he is playing that three-man uh, center forward, and he is playing that three-man uh, midfield. He's got an unusual squad there as well with Foden and Danilo. A lot of people using Danilo at the left-back slot as well. But pretty much anyone, like anyone that you look at here, is going to have that similar formation. 
Now, obviously, uh, this is a kind of formation close to my heart, but you've still got the three center backs at the back as well. Now, I'll tell you the reason for this, right, is because when you have got a full back, no matter how defensive they are, no matter what tactic that they put on, like it's, it's just coded in that they are going to make changes. You know what I mean? They are going to make changes to their team uh, to getting up and down the pitch, right? They are. So it is very, very familiar to people that if they are going to be using centre-backs, it kind of brings it back to PES 2021, where you know where the players are positioned, you know exactly where they're going to go, um, and you know exactly how they're going to control compared to a right-back or a left-back. Again, you've got Alaba here. This guy is playing a five at the back, which I think is extremely anti-meta at the moment. It's really good for stopping players. I'm going to show you how to stop a lot of these guys. Obviously, the skill level comes into it. You know what I mean? It does come into it. But if you want to compete with these guys, you can do anti-meta formation. But again, you've got your solid bank of three at the back there. Fabinho, I think this guy is definitely going to use a sub-tactic because he's going to bring Alaba across, move Fabinho up, Beckenbauer, Alaba, Rudy as his three center backs or else keep Alaba as a left back and then have Marquinhos, Rudiger, Beckenbauer as his three centers with Alaba, shove Fabinho and uh, Casemiro up, shove Neymar up onto the left and then have a bit of a switch because what a lot of people do is they will actually, um, you know, use man marking tactics or whatever. So this is a squad, right, that you are going to want to focus on if you are uh going to be here now right there's two there's two or three different things that you can do here to kind of vary this up and to give yourself a little bit of an edge but this is kind of the the talking point behind it right goalkeepers the top five goalkeepers in the game you're talking about Neuer, Cassius, Czech, Donnarumma, um, Can, and then you're talking about like Courtois, Alisson, Oblak right the top seven to eight goalkeepers any of them will do you know they're still going to make mistakes but they are going to save more often than not right center backs you will see literally every single team in the top 500 is going to have these three guys if they don't have these they're going to have Beckenbauer they're going to have Epic Piau they're going to have Rudiger they're going to have David Alaba they're going to have Kunde uh, they're going to have Delict. they're going to have a lot of them guys that you have there and then depending on what formation that you want to play you will either have you know Carlos or Davies at the back here you might have Cancelo or you might have Cancelo or Kimmich on the right flank there DMF is all about getting a stopper, somebody that's able to block the lanes. Then you need your creative midfielder, which in this case is Scolzi. Obviously, I'm just using players that are up on A or B form, except for Van Dijk. And then you have your player that's going to link everything together in the pocket, that's able to finesse shot, that's able to take it on the wing, that's able to have tight dribble control. Then you have your strikers. So you have Neymar, which is going to be instant for the dribbling. You can play him as a winger manually when you do the touching goals with Ronaldinho. You're going to have Salah and Scholes linking up, and you're going to have Salah uh, making lots of movement in around the box because he's got really high offensive awareness. But you can interlink any of these players. You can put Romanigi in, you can put Mbappe in, you can put Cristiano Ronaldo in, Haaland in, whoever you want. Now, if I was going setting up a team, right, to stop something like this, the main area that you need to stop is the middle here. This is the main area that you need to stop, right? Which is Neymar, Mario, and Salah, which are going to be here. So very simply what I would do, and it's not going to be simple to stop these top class players, but what you are going to want to do is have, if you're not wanting to have five at the back, you can play a three at the back. Now bear with me, right? The three at the back is essentially going to operate as a five at the back when you, do, when you don't have the ball. And when you have the ball, you're going to make these little slots here and tick in. Now, you might need to make a couple of personnel changes. If this was me personally and I'm playing three at the back, I'm probably going to take out Skolzi and I'm probably going to put in somebody like, let's say, Makalele, uh, who's a DMF. And then I'm also going to have an option up front for a bit of height. So that would probably be me personally what I would do. I would play this. And then you're going to have your Davies here. You're going to shove over Ronaldinho instead as a right back and you're going to take him off. You're going to change that to a right mid and then you're going to either put in whoever's up. You're going to put in Cancelo. Uh, you're going to put in Kimmich. You're going to put in whoever is up for you. Now, Cancelo is on D form at the moment, so I wouldn't be playing him. And then you're going to be playing this in an attacking midfielder role. Maybe, me maybe um, Messi, whoever that you want. This is one option that you can do. You're keeping it very tight at the back. You've got your bank here of three and your bank here of three to stop those triangles. So you've got a little triangle of your own here. Now, if you wanted to kind of change that up again, you could just like fully commit to the five. You could fully commit to the five at the back here and you could go central, 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 
and central and no width now this is something that i don't enjoy playing but it is a lot of a lot of people are asking me like what is the difference and why would you play this formation i'll tell you why you play this formation is because once you're able to stop the wing play a lot of people don't play wing play so putting all your assets in the middle of the pitch is going to keep this super tight super tight when somebody wants to play through the middle that'll force them to play out wide if they're a good player and they're able to adapt and you should have enough to be able to kind of do you know this and keep them tight enough now obviously we're not going to play Haaland there we're going to switch him out and maybe play uh, Modric or whoever's up obviously we can take a look on our reserves you know we can play whoever we want there we can play Scolzi back in here now to link everything up and we can play Mason Mount we are obviously going to play Messi or else Nene in there um, as an SS or else you can pull him even further back and have a 5 3 one, one. A lot of people don't like playing five at the back because they think it's like, you know, negative or whatever. But as I've said a lot of the time, right, you're either going to play the game to win or you're going to play to have fun. Like if you're playing to play the game to have, to win and you're not the best player uh, attacking, you need to shore up everything that you have to make yourself as compact as possible if you're a newcomer to the game. I'm not saying to go out there and be negative. I'm not saying to pass the ball around at the back. Um, and frustrate your opponent or you know do an overabundance of passes just for no purpose you're still going to be trying to win because as i've said before i'm after exiting out but as i've said before this is only one side of it you can also have your sub tactic which you can switch the whole time which is very easy to switch you just switch it by holding down or up on the d-pad and then from here you can have a completely different squad you can have a completely different squad you can go back to your five at the back you keep your three center midfielders here or your three center backs there you switch these two boys to one dmf which is makalele and then you also have paul skulls in that little hole you put davies out in the flank you put romario and messi up front and there's your team so what you'll happen is when you're attacking with the ball you're attacking like that when you're defending the ball, you're defending like that, depending on what formation you want. So that is just a bit of information for me, lads. We will have a couple of special guests on discussing this stuff because I do get a lot of questions. Apologies if I don't answer all the questions in it. There is a lot to go through to, especially if you're a newcomer. Go back and watch some of my older videos, but I'm trying to update the information for eFootball 23 V2.1 and so on. So bear with me with that. Let me know what formation you guys are using. What's working for you? Because for me, as I said, I am still using um, my basic formation, which is five at the back, but I'm using this five, two, three at the back here, uh, which I'm having fun with. Like I'm actually having fun with this formation. Obviously I'm changing the personnel every now and again. Um, so I'm kind of linking between those, but yeah, it is, it is a fun formation for me to play with. And I do like the five at the back because it gives me a lot of manual control over to the runs that I make. And that's kind of the squad I'm rocking at the moment. So yeah, let me know what squad you're using. Let me know if you've any more questions. I'll be back quite soon. Peace.